In case you're wondering, yes, that is an actual photo of me from my GR11 through hike that I did back in 2021, eating a completely normal through hiking breakfast. So, what's this video about? Well, if you like watching a lot of hiking stuff on YouTube, then you've seen a lot of people through hiking the PCT, the CDT, the AT, and other big through hiking trails in North America. So naturally, you might think that the through hiking community in Europe isn't that big. But that couldn't be further from the truth, because there are a lot of people here in Europe that do long distance hiking, and there are a lot of through hikes in Europe that deserve much more attention. The wild camping rules in Europe are different for each country and each region, so I definitely encourage you to do your own research. And I definitely don't want to encourage you to break any rules, especially because I'm a YouTuber and I shouldn't encourage you to break any rules, at least publicly. As far as I know, you're legally allowed to camp pretty much anywhere in Scotland, Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Estonia. Then there are a few countries that allow camping in a lot of areas, but not all of them, like Latvia, Lithuania, Romania, Switzerland, and England. And unfortunately, in the rest of Europe, wild camping is banned on paper. But in reality, most people do it anyway, including me. Damn, that's pretty good. When you're wild camping in Europe, I would avoid doing it in natural parks, especially if they're very popular. I would set up the tent very late in the evening and take it down early in the morning, and also set it up in a somewhat hidden place. Having a tent in green or gray colors definitely helps with this. Also keep in mind that building fires and survival shelters is prohibited in pretty much most of Europe. And if you do that, you're more likely to get a big fine. And one last thing that I wanted to mention about wild camping in Europe is animal shit. The mountains here are usually filled with sheep, goat, cows, horses and other animals that the farmers usually come to check up every day. This means that 50% of the time you're sleeping, eating or sitting in animal shit. I'm actually probably sitting in animal shit right now. In Spain, Italy and France, the mountains are filled with free mountain huts that most locals prefer to stay in over building their own tent. They're called refugios or something like that, depending on which country you're in. And they're usually an old farmer's house that's cleared out. Maybe there's a table there, a few bunk beds, and anyone can stay there for free. To give you context, while through hiking the GR11 for 36 days, I passed by maybe 50 or more of these free mountain huts. That said, Always be prepared that not all of them will be open, not all of them will be always free, and not all of them are in a good enough condition to sleep in. I personally prefer to pitch up my own tent and do wild camping, but staying in a refugio can be a very good way to meet with some of the local hikers in the area, and also you don't have to worry about any wild camping rules. Generally, I found out that I'm not using my water filter nearly as much when I'm hiking in Italy or Spain. That's because there are a lot of free-flowing water taps called fonts. If you're passing through a city, even a smaller one, chances are that it has one, two or three of these fonts where you can get free drinking water. They're also scattered across the mountains to use for farm animals. That said, I would still recommend you to bring a water filter because the water isn't always drinkable from these fonts and sometimes they run dry. In regards to food, you won't find nearly as much processed foods in the smaller shops when you're resupplying. So if you're trying to resupply in a small town, chances are that there won't be any dried meals or similar products. Instead, you usually have to mix your own dinners. I actually have an upcoming video about lightweight hiking recipes that are good for your health, so keep an eye out for that. There's also a much lower selection of nuts, dried fruit, bars, candy, and so on. One meal that you can find in pretty much any local small store is a baguette filled with a lot of cheese. I, I eat this big baguette every morning because you could make it very easily. It's very tasty. It has a lot of fat and a lot of calories. In most of Europe, except for Romania and north of Scandinavian countries, there isn't really any danger of bear attacks. There are only a few bears scattered across the rest of Europe, and usually you don't have to worry about them because they're very shy and 
chances that you'll encounter one are extremely slim. But there are a few other dangers though, like wild boars and shepherd's dogs. In general, wild boars are pretty safe. They usually run away from you, but if you encounter them on a trail close by, if you scare them and they're with their newborn babies, the mother will probably attack you. They have very sharp teeth, they weigh a few hundred kilos, and a wild boar attack can sometimes even be fatal. And if you keep leaving food in your tent, then it's probably only a matter of time until a pack of wild boar try to get in during the night. So to avoid this encounter, you have to hang your food in a tree, similar to what you do in North America in bear country, at least 50 meters away from your tent. Since I started doing this, I haven't had any encounters with wild boar. You also have to watch out for shepherd dogs, especially the big white ones. A lot of farmers here don't really care about other hikers, mountain bikers, and other people that are in the mountains. So they use aggressive and untrained dogs to herd their sheep. Sometimes you'll have to take a pretty big detour by going through bush or some hills to avoid a pack of animals that are left alone with five or six of these big aggressive shepherd dogs. Most of the time though, they're very friendly and cute, but some of them are aggressive and you have to watch out for that. If you meet an aggressive shepherd's dog, do not be aggressive towards him, speak calmly, do not face in the other direction and slowly back away, do not do any sudden movements and do not show any fear and you'll probably be fine. Be prepared that, unless you're hiking in England, obviously nobody will understand English. People here sometimes even have a negative attitude when you start speaking to them in English, especially in Italy, Spain and France. If you're through hiking in Europe, especially in these three countries, I would say that it's pretty much mandatory to learn at least a few phrases to be able to resupply and to talk to other people. But overall though, most people here are very open and friendly, it's just that it's a bit hard to communicate with them if you don't understand the language. There definitely are quite a few European countries that could be considered quite expensive. But even though that's the case, you can still do it on a very low budget if you're very conscious about where you spend your money. For example, if you don't stay in any hotels, mountain huts, don't eat out in any restaurants, cafes, and limit the nights that you spend in campsites and do more wild camping and cook your own food, then probably the cost won't be too high. For example, me personally, I spent a bit below 1,000 euros to do a 36-day thru-hike in northern Spain, and that includes all the train tickets and plane tickets as well. I've personally done a lot of research on different thru-hikes in Europe because together with my wife, we make posters of various thru-hikes across the world. And to do this, we need to do a lot of research on which of these trails are the most popular ones. On a side note, if you want to check them out, go to trailgoals.com and by entering the code OSCARHIKES, you'll get 10% off. Anyway, here's a list of some of the most popular thru-hikes in Europe. In Spain, Portugal and France, the most popular thru-hike definitely is Camino de Santiago, which actually consists of many different routes that go all across these countries. In Portugal there's also Rota Vincentina, which is a very popular coastal thru-hike. In Spain and France there's GR11, which I did, GR10 and HRP, which all basically cross the Pyrenees mountain range sideways. GR11 mostly goes through Spain, GR10 mostly through France, and the HRP goes somewhere in the middle through both of these countries, but it goes higher in elevation and it's in general a more remote trail. There's also a really popular thru-hike called the GR20, which goes across the French-owned Corsica island. Moving on to the Alps, there are actually quite a lot of options, like the Walker's Hot Route, the Via Alpina 1 and the Via Alpina 2, the Alp Adria Trail, the Tour du Mont Blanc, which everyone knows, the GR5, Tromfad and the Via Alpina trails. The only downside to hiking in the Alps is that it's much, much more popular there, more people through hike there, and you're more likely to get caught if you're wild camping. Germany is a completely different beast because it's littered with many through hiking trails, like the Rennsteig, the Rainsteig, Rothaarsteig, the Eiffelsteig, and many, many others. And I know that I'm butchering all of these names. Other notable trails in Europe include the Pieterpad that goes through the Netherlands, the Via Romea Franzigena, 
which goes from the UK to Rome, and the Via Transylvanica trail that goes across Romania. The UK, just like Germany, also has an extremely large through hiking community. And some of their most popular trails include the West Highland Way, the Southwest Coast Trail, the Pennine Way, the Ridgeway Trail, and many others. Up in the north, you'll find the Kungsleden and the Padjelanteleden which both go through Sweden. And also the Long Lofoten Crossing, which I did, which isn't really that popular, but I think it deserves a spot here just because of how beautiful this trail is. And remember that these trails are just the most popular ones in Europe. There are also way, way more through hikes in Europe that are less known, maybe less well marked, but also extremely beautiful and should be on anyone's bucket list. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Bye.